What's up guys, welcome to another iOS video. My name is Dave and in today's video, I'm gonna share the full story of how I went from having no knowledge or background in programming to landing my very first iOS developer job at a Fortune 10 company. If you are an aspiring iOS developer or are trying to learn more about what the field of iOS looks like, the whole goal of this channel is to help shed light into what it looks like to break in by sharing the experiences and the tips that I've learned from my own journey. I know for me, when I was in my discovery phase, I was lucky enough to have some connections in iOS who were willing to connect and share with me their own journeys and their own stories. And so I wanted to do the same for anybody out there who may not have that or is just curious to hear another person's story. All right, so let's get into it. Before learning iOS, I was working doing business development and strategy for a software company in Chicago. And I really learned a lot from that experience about how to grow a software company and enjoyed my time there. But for years prior, I had always had a vague interest in software development. I just never really took any action or never did anything about it. And I got to the point where I wasn't fully confident that I wanted to do business development for the rest of my career. And so it was my wife actually who really challenged me and said, hey, you know, you've talked and, and thought about this for years, why don't you start to actually do something about it? And so that was exactly the initial push that I needed to uh, just start pouring myself into it. And since then, I really haven't looked back. I pretty much started spending every hour that I had outside of work and outside of family things, trying to learn software development. And pretty early on, gravitated towards Swift and iOS, uh, partly just because I, I really enjoy using Apple products. Uh, but also because Swift was very friendly towards people brand new to programming. And so I just started taking it one step at a time. I started with uh, Ray Wenderlich stuff and uh, just tried to expose myself to different tutorials and the fundamentals of iOS programming and really enjoyed it for several months. And so that was kind of the confirmation that I needed to take the next step in trying to connect with people in the industry and learn from people that were much further along than me, learn about their journeys and kind of see what advice they had for somebody in my position. And that initial discovery period for me lasted many months. Uh, it was nice to be in a position where I had a decent job situation and so I didn't have to act out of desperation or, or anything like that. But again, just took it one step at a time and got to the point where I was enjoying it enough to kind of start to ask the question, okay, what would this look like for me to actually pursue iOS as a career? I think it was pretty clear to me that just learning iOS on nights and weekends with a full-time job and other things going on in my life, that it would take me a very long time to acquire the skills that were necessary to be a solid candidate. And so that led me to start to look into boot camps. I knew some people who had done that with web development and so I uh, started to look into iOS boot camps and uh, pretty much the only one in the States in 2020 that offered an in-person program was Dev Mountain. And so uh, I guess it made that decision kind of easy in terms of which boot camp to, to go to. And so applied there, um, had a pretty straightforward application process, got accepted, and then was faced with the decision of, okay, everything is lined up. Uh, I've done kind of all the, the pre-learning necessary to give this a shot. Uh, what's holding you back? And the honest answer there for me was nothing. I was really fortunate enough to be in a position where uh, with savings that I had, I was able to uh, pay for the, the cost of the boot camp. And my wife also has a good job where we could essentially just live cheaply during the time after the boot camp where I was searching for a job. So again, all of the steps leading up to that point, the next obvious step for me was to do the boot camp, And so that's what I did. I quit my job and I started Dev Mountain's program in February of 2020. And I really enjoyed my time at Dev Mountain. I think it's a very solid program for learning the fundamentals of iOS development and was definitely the right decision for, for me personally. If you're interested in learning more about my time at Dev Mountain, my last video was a full review of that course, so you can find the link to that video in the description. But I graduated Dev Mountain and had a lot of confidence that I had a pretty strong foundation that I could then continue to build upon and continue to learn on my own and didn't necessarily expect that I was gonna land a job immediately, but uh, did feel like I was headed in the right direction and had a pretty clear understanding of, of what are some things that I can be doing 
to kind of put myself in the best position to actually get hired. And so from there, I pretty much just started applying right away. In terms of my resume, all I really had was Dev Mountain and one app on the App Store for iOS related things. And so I would spend about half of my day looking for jobs, uh, trying to network, applying to jobs, and then the other half I would spend trying to learn new things and fill in any gaps that I had. And I had a pretty rude awakening early on, not just because I wasn't getting interviews, but because I literally wasn't getting responses at all. I think in the first month and a half, I probably applied to around 100 jobs and maybe only 15% of those even had the courtesy to send an automated rejection letter. And so it became pretty clear to me early on that the biggest challenge that I was gonna face and that any new developer trying to break in is going to be their lack of experience. And especially with COVID and there being less entry-level roles available, employers are in a position where they can afford to target people and, and favor people who have past experience, uh, which becomes very challenging for somebody like me to ultimately break in. And so I kind of had a realization that I really needed to change my mindset and my approach to this whole thing. And the way that I thought to do that was to kind of accept that I didn't have experience and that that was kind of being counted against me, but also that it was completely out of my control. But what was in my control was how well I can compensate for that lack of experience in a variety of other ways. And so the first way that I thought would be good to do that was by working on another app. And so that's what I did. I kind of shifted the majority of my efforts to just working on this application. I got it published on the App Store and then was able to add that to my resume. And so at this point, I was starting to get a little bit more traction with applications that I was sending out. I think I had a couple first round interviews and phone screens. And also at this time, through a connection, I got a first round interview at PayPal. So obviously was super excited about that and really transitioned all my attention to preparing for those interviews. And I actually got all the way through to the final round with PayPal later to find out that they went in a different direction. So that was kind of the next big blow for me because at that point I didn't have any other interviews in the pipeline and so I was really starting back from ground zero at that point. And so from there, the next step that I took, again, just with this idea of trying to compensate for my lack of experience was to look for an internship. And so I was able to find several companies that were looking for an iOS intern on AngelList. And so I connected with a few of them and then chose a company to start with as an iOS intern. And at this point, it was about three months after I had graduated from the bootcamp. And the internship was unpaid. And I realized that there are some people out there who have very strong opinions against ever doing an unpaid internship. But for me, I really saw it as an intentional temporary step with the goal of making me a more desirable candidate for a full-time job. I was doing about 25 hours of work a week as an intern. So I still had time to be applying to different positions and as soon as I had the internship on my resume, I really do think that this was the next kind of uptick for me in terms of the interest that I was getting on applications that I was sending out. Um, I do believe that this is kind of the closest thing that you can get to the experience that companies are looking for because it kind of says to them that, hey, you know, you've worked on a team, a, a legitimate project, the company has a website and all that. And even if you don't learn a ton through that experience, it kind of gives the perception to potential employers that you kind of know what it is to work on a team and that you've been involved in real life projects. And then about a month and a half into the internship, I released a third App Store app. And so at that point, I felt pretty confident with where my resume was at with the internship, the three App Store apps, the boot camp, in addition to the reps and experience that I was getting with some of the interviews that I had had, that if I just kept doing what I was doing, that something would likely hit at some point. And at the five month mark since graduating, I was getting calls and messages every single day from recruiters, but in pretty much every case, they were looking for a senior iOS developer. And that was something that was really frustrating to me because clearly wherever they were getting my contact information from also had my resume, which showed that I didn't have experience as an iOS developer and uh, just had very poor interactions with uh, recruiters and was kind of fed up with them. One day I got a message on LinkedIn from a recruiter, which I was getting all the time, but he had said that he actually reviewed my experience and thought that I would be a good fit for a role that he was recruiting for. So 
Figured I'd just give it a shot, and after some calls with him and a couple rounds of technical interviews, I finally got an official job offer as an iOS developer from CVS Health. And that was just so wild to go from pounding you know, 90 applications a month and grinding day in, day out, to having that all be over and finally getting an offer. At that point, I was so used to rejection and just needing to constantly push through all of the no's, but at the same time, I had confidence in my abilities that something would work out eventually, and all it takes is one. So all in all, I applied to over 500 companies, had 13 first round interviews or phone screens, made it through to the final round of three companies to get one offer, which came five and a half months after I graduated the bootcamp. And I remember being so shocked at my bootcamp when I first heard that some people were applying to over hundreds of roles. But keep in mind that the vast majority of those applications are just one-click applications on places like Indeed. So it's not an uncommon thing for entry-level developer roles. So that's my story. I wanted to wrap up by saying it can be done. It's definitely not easy, and there certainly are elements of luck that are involved. But I think that anybody who's willing to work very hard, who is strategic in their approach and can do that over a long period of time is somebody that's gonna have a really good shot at breaking in. I make new videos every week and I have a lot in store to share with you guys going further into some of the steps that I took with things like publishing apps, internships, applying to jobs, and a lot more. And if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Hit the like button so that more people can discover this video and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.